Good morning, everybody. Today being Saturday, let's offer the Mass in commemoration of, in veneration of our Blessed Mother. And so we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Coming together as God's family, let's ask our Father's forgiveness, for he is full of gentleness and compassion. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the Son of Man. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of Mary, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who willed that at the message of an angel, your word should take flesh, in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, grant that we who pray to you and believe her to be truly the mother of God, the mother of your son, may be helped by her intercession all the days of our lives. And we pray for all the members of the staff for whom we offer this mass. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Judges. There was a certain man from Zorah of the clan of the Danites, whose name was Manoah. His wife was barren and had borne no children. An angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Though you are barren and have had no children, yet you will conceive and bear a son. Now then, be careful to take no wine or strong drink and to eat nothing unclean. As for the son, you will conceive and bear. No razor shall touch his head, for this boy is to be consecrated to God from the womb. It is he who will begin the deliverance of Israel from the power of the Philistines. The woman went and told her husband, a man of God came to me. He had the appearance of an angel of God, terrible indeed. I did not ask him where he came from, nor did he tell me his name. But he said to me, you will be with child and will bear a son. So take neither wine nor strong drink and eat nothing unclean, for the boy shall be consecrated to God from the womb until the day of his death. The woman bore a son and named him Samson. The boy grew up and the Lord blessed him. The spirit of the Lord stirred him. The word of the Lord. Be to God. My mouth shall be filled with your praise and I will sing your glory. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety, for you are my rock and my fortress. O oh my God, rescue me from the hand of the wicked. My, my mouth, mouth shall, shall be filled, filled with, with your, your praise, praise and, and I, I will sing your you. glory. For you are my hope, O oh Lord, my trust, O oh God, from my youth. On you I depend from birth. From my mother's womb, you are my strength. 
my, my mouth shall, shall be praised with your, with your praise, praise and, and I will sing your glory. I will treat of the mighty works of the Lord. O oh God, I will tell of your singular justice. O oh God, you have taught me from my youth. Until the present, I proclaim your wondrous deeds. My, my mouth, mouth shall, shall be filled, filled with, with your, your praise, praise and, and I will, I will sing, sing your glory. Your glory. Alleluia, alleluia. O root of Jesse's stem, sign of God's love for all his people, come to save us without delay. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. You may want to be seated in your home as the Gospel of the day is rather long. In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah of the priestly division of Abijah. His wife was from the daughters of Aaron and her name was Elizabeth. Both were righteous in the eyes of God, observing all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blamelessly. But they had no child because Elizabeth was barren and both were advanced in years. Once when he was serving as priest in his division's turn before God, according to the practice of the priestly service, he was chosen by Lord to enter the sanctuary of the Lord to burn incense. Then, when the whole assembly of the people was praying outside at the hour of incense offering, the angel of the Lord appeared to him standing at the right of the altar of incense. Zachariah was troubled by what he saw, and fear came upon him. But the angel of the Lord said to him, Do not be afraid, Zachariah, because your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you shall name him John and you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He will drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb, and he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of fathers toward children and from the disobedient to the understanding of the righteous to prepare a people fit for the Lord. Then Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man and my wife is advanced in years. And the angel of the Lord said to him in reply, I am Gabriel, who stand before the Lord. I was sent to speak to you and to announce to you this good news. But now you will be speechless and unable to speak until the day these things take place, because you do not believe my words, which will be fulfilled at their proper time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and were amazed that he stayed so long in the sanctuary. And when he came out, he was unable to speak to them. And they realized that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He was gesturing to them and remained mute. Then, when his days of ministry were completed, he went home. 
And after this time, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and she went into seclusion for five months, saying, So has the Lord done for me at a time when he has seen fit to take away my disgrace before others. The Gospel of the Lord. The salvation history of Israel is a story of a long pregnancy. My dear sisters and brothers, as we search the pages of the Old Testament following the route that the chosen people take down their centuries, we realize that it is truly the story of a long pregnancy. God prepares a people ready to listen to his word. God prepares their hearts and minds in order to sow the seed of his life-giving word in them. And the various incidents that you find of physical pregnancies like in the case of Sarah, the aged wife of the old man Abraham, or the mother of Samuel, who stands in the temple crying out for God's mercy that she be blessed with the son, or even the story of the unnamed mother of Samuel and that of Elizabeth in the Gospel of the Day is but the story of this long pregnancy of Israel lived out in many different individuals. What do I mean? God made a promise. He made a pledge to the patriarchs that he would make his home with them that he would bless them with uh, the seed of someone in whom all the nations will be blessed. And if you read the gospel in a superficial way, you will think that it is the seed of Abraham, or later that it is the seed of David. But then, it's not until next Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Advent, when we read the account of the Annunciation, do you realize that Jesus, the seed, the word of God, that is the one that is promised by God. And so it is for this event that God would prepare the people of Israel over the centuries. And when the time is right, God's word, the seed of God's word takes flesh by being born of the Virgin Mary. And notice how God chooses women who are aged, women that are barren, women that are inconceivable, or people who cannot bear children. Precisely it is these that God would choose so that his works may be known. And that is why in the responsorial psalm, we all sang out, my mouth will be filled with your praise and I shall sing your glory. Sisters and brothers, just as God seed the, sowed the seed of his word in Israel, so too he wants to do in each of us. If only we open our minds and our hearts. And so, as we go through this Eucharist, preparing ourselves for the coming of the Feast of Christmas, let's open our minds and hearts to God that the seed of his word, Jesus, will take root in us, will grow in us.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual food. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, these offerings, and by your power change them into the sacrament of salvation, in which fulfilling the sacrifices of the fathers was offered the true Lamb, Jesus Christ, your Son, born of the ever-Virgin Mary, in a way beyond all telling, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For truly, even to its sins, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the author of our salvation your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him the, angel, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, and the chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Michael our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our parents, sisters, and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of their resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her beloved spouse, with St. John Vianney, Don Bosco, St. John the Baptist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may come to be co best to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let's sum up our prayers and petitions for the team of staff that work for us with so much of commitment as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
bear a son, and his name will be called Emmanuel, God with us. Let us pray. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord our God, always show forth your mercy in us, that we who commemorate in faith the mother of your son may be saved by his incarnation. And we pray that you bless our members of the staff and their families with your grace. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Today being Saturday, let's honor the mother and pray the memorare. Join me if you know the prayer. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to their protection, implored your help, or sought the intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly to your patronage, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions, but on our necessities. Hear and answer us. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, this weekend, we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent. As you make preparations for the Christmas celebration in your homes, within your small, safe circles, remember to make space also to participate in the liturgy. You know, you go shopping, you go relaxing here and there, why not come for Sunday Mass? This is also a safe place where we make sure that parishioners keep a safe and a social distance from families that don't live under the same roof. So make plans and come by for the Christmas celebration. On the 24th afternoon, we have four masses, one o'clock, 2.30, four o'clock, and at 6 p.m. And on Christmas day, also we have four masses in the morning. Come by and celebrate Christmas with us. Have a wonderful day.